Hello and welcome to another episode of the Entrepreneur in Lyman TV. Today is a special episode is about the Child Innocence Equine Experience project that we have officially opened this weekend. And I have a special guest to help me talk about this project. And the special guest is special from two reasons. One, because she's our newest supporter, so I wanted her to share with you how it came to her to support the project. And second, because she, in a very short period of time, became a very dear friend. So, Roxana, please introduce yourself. Hello, Irina. Thank you for the invitation. I really appreciate being here with you today and um, sharing this with you and everybody else who's watching, hopefully as many people as possible. Um, so my name is Roxana, Roxana Popa, and um, I'm a general dentist. I've been practicing for quite some time and um, I met you because I had some personal difficulties at the beginning of this year. So it hasn't been long. And um, you had a great impact in my life. You, you brought a lot of inner peace and calm and joy. Mm -hmm. So um, this is how I found you through a common friend actually and this is how I learned about this foundation that is so dear to your heart and it's something that spoke to my heart as well for a few reasons one is because horses are involved mm -hmm. I loved horses as I grew up but because of the academics, I kind of had to put that aside. Be also because my son, my oldest son, Andre, he loves horses. He's been horseback riding since he was a little boy, seven or eight. Uh, and he's actually pursuing his dream and following his heart. And this is what he's learning to do more, to be with horses and help them and treat them and so on and I think the most important part is um, why I'm involved and why I decided to be involved with this foundation is because I've been through a difficult childhood and from what I read about yourself through your biography you have been through a very difficult childhood as well. And I hope that moving forward and, you know, helping this foundation, no more kids are going through situations like this and they grow up in an environment where they feel loved and safe and protected so they can flourish and give the best they have inside of them. Yeah, so beautifully said. And that's the vision, like a vision that came to me is that in three generations, if we're doing this work and if we're helping a lot of youth and our program here is with the help of horses, if, if we help a lot of youth overcome that feeling of, not being good enough, something is wrong with them if they have a difficult situation in, in family or some have difficult situation at school. But if we help, help them figure out who they are and they are good and nothing is wrong with them and whatever happened to them, it doesn't define their life. Like both you and I are very accomplished professionally and I wanted you to share a little bit. It's not bragging, but it's showing that despite difficult childhood, one can become whatever they desire to be. So I know you had a dream to be dentist. Can you share a little bit of your professional side? Yes, of course. So I 
pretty much knew since I was in grade seven or eight that I want to become a doctor and I was between dentistry and ophthalmology. And I kind of decided the very last minute when I registered for my exams that I will go towards dentistry. Why? Because I think as a dentist, you're more independent. You're not part of a hospital. You can do more of what you want, how you want things to be done, the business to run it yourself. So a bit of entrepreneurial spirit. Yes. And um, so I graduated in Yash, just like you. And I had the board exams in Romania. Yes. Um, I So I graduated in Yash in Romania. I met my future husband during this last year of university. We got married and then I came to Canada. So all this happened almost 26, 25 and a bit years ago. Um, Also, I knew, I always knew that I will leave Romania. Mm. Um, I I always knew that. And... uh, in my dreams, I'm, I was always flying, probably flying away from that environment that was so stressful for me. But my husband happens to be through, among many other things, a pilot as well. So I'm flying <laughs> in many ways. So we met, I came, he helped me tremendously and I passed my board exams and then I did a lot of continuing education so now in my own clinic I've been owning my own clinic for almost nine years now I'm doing a lot of specialty work and um, not that much general dentistry myself I help my young associates with the actual general dentistry, but I'm doing more surgery, orthodontic procedures, root canals, so on and so forth. I I would have loved to become a specialist, but again, I had my first born during my board exams. Wow. Uh, I had to, it was the last year that uh, the Canadian uh, Association um, approved the board exams. After that, I would have had to go back to school but um so in the middle of my exams I found out that I was pregnant so we welcomed the baby and uh, the thought and I I pushed through um but it wasn't easy looking back so for my third exam I had to fly to Vancouver I was eight and a half month pregnant wow. at that time and for my final exam the patient exam which was in Halifax so I also had to fly but it was a week after I delivered Andre um, a healthy 9.5 pound baby I was a size zero at that time or minus two as my husband kept saying (laughs) So I had to leave him home and I went for my exams, my practical exam in Halifax and I passed. So I always said and considered that he was my good luck charm, my first baby. Um, And I was hoping he will continue with dentistry and become a specialist because I couldn't. Uh. Um. I realized that maybe it's better that I didn't become a specialist because I love all aspects of dentistry and I practice a bit of each specialty in the dental field. Mm -hmm. And also it wasn't his dream to be a dentist, although I think he would have been fantastic. He has people skills, manual dexterity, a lot of the qualities that would have made him a a great dental surgeon. But he chose horses and I'm very happy that he found the courage to acknowledge this passion and transform it into his life and his reality. 
in his own way. Very interesting story. And, and I would want to say beautiful story, but I know it was hard. But sometimes we do what we need to do in the moment that we need to be doing it. And that is what I admire about people who had a difficult childhood. They know how to push through even when it's tough. And that's admirable. That's a very good trait. So that's why I say everything is possible when you know it's your calling and you knew it was your calling since you were young and you chose like being a dentist. And then knowing that you came to a new country and sometimes when we come to a new country, we got to do what we got to do, uh, like pass exams. Like I passed my professional engineering exams, locked, locked in, a, in a little uh, cupboard actually to study because that's all I had at that time I was fresh in Canada and you do what you need to do in order to create a better life for yourself and in your case for for your children so congratulations for being strong and staying strong all those years and um, and at the same time having the heart to fly and also to allow your children to fly in their own direction yes that's um that's very true uh and i don't think we had a choice really like when you had we, we both grew in communist romania right so um the education system was such that there was competition and you had to realize very early in the game that unless you're serious about studying, your future might not look that bright. So that's another reason probably I realized very early that this is probably a better path for me. Of course, I love fashion. I love ballroom dancing. Maybe I would have been somewhere else in Canada or somewhere else I would have pursued a different dream but the reality was different then yeah. right so that's why now being here and I'm very grateful that we live in Canada there are so many wonderful opportunities if you are really focused and determined to um you know, to uh, accomplish something. But now I'm at that stage where maybe I want to try something else as well, introduce something else in my life as well, give more. Uh, so so let, me, let me ask that question then. So when you connected with me through actually a support of our hours, Krina, who was maybe one of the first people that I didn't know from anywhere that came here was with the horse. And then she went home and, and, and sent a bunch of money. And it wasn't like easy for her to send that bunch of money, but she felt it so strongly. And that's what she did. And when I asked her like, why she just said that's what I felt that's what I did and you connected with me through that so I want to notify the power of one supporter then another one can find the mission because to help a lot of youth to have a bunch of forces is not a one woman work not a one woman job Absolutely. And that's why I'm so grateful for your support. And you are one of the newest supporters. And I wanted to ask you, what was, how did it come to you? Or how did you feel it from your heart? Just say a few words. Like, I don't know how you connected and say, yes, I want to support this. Because I know you support it in a few ways, but I can see, like, I know people who are, supporting just you know a gesture but you are thinking ahead and you're thinking okay let me do this that I will do this so you are really supporting like from the heart and that's why I wanted to hear your input 
so um of course it was from the heart again for for the reasons i mentioned before but i also appreciated how much work and heart you put into everything and especially being by yourself and with nobody else helping you and you have such a great vision for this foundation and you know exactly where you want it to go and how it should look in the future so I just thought it's a great vision and I would like even in a small way to be part of it and be able to help and give back because of you helping me so fast. I, I thought I've seen some results within myself fairly soon after um, we first met and I was not confident at that time <laughs> at all but I had nothing to lose so I thought okay why not let's just try um so that's why I even wrote that note to you when I send all the supplies and that's why the amount the small check that I wrote was written a certain way and it had a lot of meaning for mm -hmm. myself because it was about me, but it was also about my family, my children. So, um, and again, I wish I could be, I could have been there on Saturday, but as you said, energetically, I was there, even if physically I was not able, because <laughs> I don't know it, if it was an accident there are no accidents we know that but at the same time I was supporting another charity that has to do with children as well mm -hmm. so that uh, we've been helping for many years so it's so, one world yes so on Saturday we had everyone write some notes for youth and post it on a post-it board so I'm just going to read a few and then at the end, I will ask you to give a message to both people that want to come on board and support this mission and to youth. So I'm just going to read them. I didn't read them before. I'm reading them now. So trust yourself and keep doing your best. Absolutely. No matter what you're going through, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. You are important. Take great care of yourself always. True. Yes. I wish I knew that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't it? You are important. Exactly. This is, this is something that I didn't know because I felt not important. I felt like whatever. I shouldn't even exist. So that's a very good message. Another one, it says you can do anything through love. I'm learning that, yes. Mm -hmm. To use the heart more than the mind, the logical mind. Yes. You are welcome. You are appreciated. You are loved. Absolutely. Every child should know that. Blessings. Be uniquely you. You will be guided to all you need to do to heal. Never give up. Yes, very true. Looking at Andre, yes, this, I have a totally different perspective. And again, another one, never give up. Anything is possible. Never give up. Ah, one beautiful one. Follow your heart always in all ways. Yes, very nice. Yes, I like spelling games. <laughs> Create what you want in life. And we had the youth as well. And we had the youngest was nine year old. So I don't know who wrote what wow. because they were all there. Your future is limitless if you believe it is. Beautiful. That's a great mindset to have. So yes. what would you, if you imagine yourself 
12 year old what would your message would be if you were to write to your 12 years old i want to say so believe in yourself go after your dreams make them come true and um just know that you are very important and you are loved and you have your unique special place in this universe. Wow, it's beautiful. I love it, heart. <laughs> and I love your heart, earrings. Uh, thank you. And if you could inspire more people to support this cause, the Child Innocence Equine Experience Project, I call it, because we are looking for corporate sponsorships, we are looking for donations, we're looking for volunteers. What is a message that you can give based on your knowledge and awareness? Hmm. Well, to, to take one step, to take the first step towards that and then see where it leads. So basically do something, don't just wait, just do it like Nike says. So take that first step and, you know, develop from there, see what becomes of it. But get involved because it is very important to protect these children and make sure that they know that they're loved and mm -hmm. offer them a safe environment to grow up. Yes. I feel that. And I feel like everyone can do something even on their own journey to like to work on themselves to heal themselves to understand different perspectives different things and each of us doing our own work makes the world a better place and then if someone is called towards this mission go towards this mission if they are called towards something else but as long as we have the heart of making the future better than the past I think we're doing our work in the world. Yes, beautifully said. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we all have a mission and we have to look and discover it. And yes. Do our, do our homework and work with us to become better and better. Yes. Yes, like I know at the beginning you said like, oh, so much homework. And like it was a little bit maybe intimidating or a little bit, I don't know, I don't want to put words in your, the way you would said it, but it, it felt like it's an undertaking, right? Because you already have a busy life, you already have like a lot of commitments, and yet you've done it and you've seen a difference. So it wasn't intimidating, but it was, um, I thought, oh, I'm going to talk to Irina and she'll take care of all my troubles and make them disappear. But no, you need to look deep down in yourself and treat these wounds and be at peace with them. Let them go. And this will make you a better person for yourself, for the ones you interact with, the way you interact with everyone around will just come from a different perspective. And just like you say all the time, you will be able to navigate through maybe difficult situations with ease and grace. Mm -hmm. this what my goal is. And I think slowly and surely <laughs> we're moving towards accomplishing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being my guest, Roxana. Thank you Thanks. for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's a little bit different. And I hope this inspired you to do whatever fulfills your heart 
to support any mission that you feel called. And if you feel called to support child innocence with horses, equine experience, I'll be so happy to talk to you.